All right, so when I left off, I was showing you the pen tool to draw complex shapes in Illustrator. Now the pen tool is, is the oldest tool in Illustrator and it's not meant to really be used with a stylus. It's all about precision clicking. And so the mouse is actually in many ways the best way to use the pen tool, right? But what you need to know about the pen tool is it's the easiest way to really modify existing anchors. So even though I drew this, I can see that that curve is not what I want. So what I can do is go back with the pen tool and I can hold command to get back to the, the last selection tool I used, which is a small selection tool, and I can click an individual anchor. And then I can adjust it, right? And all that's with the small selection tool. So where can the pen tool help? Well, when I did the pen tool, I thought, as you always do, I want as few anchors as possible. So I just did one there and one there. But if I follow my sketch, that, that little beak bill is a little bit more complicated than just one straight curve, right? So if I need to, with the pen tool, I can add a point. And it'll just automatically add a point exactly splitting that curve. And then I can use the anchor to pull that out and make it a slightly more complex curve. So there's no like great virtue to having fewer anchors, but it makes it more rational, it makes it easier to understand. Instead of the other problem, when you use other tools besides the pen tool, like the pencil tool, which I love, or the blob brush tool, which I'll show you, it creates automatically a lot of anchors for you. And then your problem for cleaning it up is usually using the pen tool to delete anchors you don't need. <laughs> so it's just working on either side. Now the trickiest thing, and I don't, I don't quite understand why it is this way, but when you want to just move an anchor, so I want to move just that anchor point a little bit out, I can't select the whole thing and then find that anchor and then move it, because it will move everything, right? So instead, what do I have to do? I'm holding down Command, so I have this small selection tool. I have to just hover over it until I find it, right? and then I am able to move it individually. So that's, it's just kind of an oddity of Illustrator you get used to. And I'm sure the people that just love Illustrator are used to it and, and wouldn't have it any other way. That is honestly why it is so different than Photoshop. It's because this program has been around just as long and the people that have used it even before Adobe owned it because there's a macro media program before that, um, they're committed to where the tools are and how they work. And so that's why Transform is not the same in Illustrator as it is in Photoshop, even though they're owned by the same company. So you make little adjustments that way until you're happy. And the great advantage of the pen tool is that when you hover over an anchor point, it will automatically delete it if you want. When you hover over the path without an anchor point, it will add, automatically add one if you like. And you can convert this is kind of the most misunderstood tool. If you hold down Option, you get this little uh, empty arrow. That's the Convert Anchor Point tool. And so you can turn a curve with the Convert Anchor Point, there it is, into a straight, right? So you can see that half of that became straight now, and the other half became a curve. So you have ultimate control. Now, if I'm working off of my sketch, but I can't see my sketch, that's a problem. This is a lot like our shape composition exercise. So one option I have is I can take this whole path I just drew with the pen tool, and I can make it more transparent using the transparency options. And you can always find these under window, right? So these are the ones I usually have on. I have image trace on, I have layers on, I have transparency on. Um, and that allows me to kind of see it a little bit. But just like we did with the shape tools option, I could also take my layer, and I'm gonna show you how to make duplicates in Illustrator, which can be really helpful because you can duplicate paths perfectly. But you can't do Command J. Do not hit Command J in Illustrator. It takes you into some weird viewing mode that's hard to get out of. And I slip every once in a while because I'm so used to Command J for duplicate. So instead, what you do is you have to select the whole path you want. This is the layer of my sketch. 
So it's not a path. It's just a JPEG that's floating in there, a raster file that doesn't belong, right? But I'm going to select the whole thing, and then I'm going to hit Command-C to copy. So that's pretty familiar, or Edit, Copy. Then I am going to lock that layer. Again, it's all about being really rational. I'm going to go to the very top of my layers and make a new layer, just like in Photoshop. And then I'm going to go to Edit. I'm going to select on that new layer. Go to Edit and Paste in Place. The shortcut for that is Shift-Command-V, but it's too many. So I just, I always go to Edit, Paste in Place. So Command-V on its own doesn't, it copies it and pastes it in, but it doesn't put it in the same place, right? If you want it exactly placed the same way, which you will often want it that way in Illustrator, then you have to go to edit, paste in place. So I made a copy of my sketch at the very top, and it's perfectly aligned with what I've been doing. So now I can take that sketch, and I can dim its opacity. So it's just kind of floating above everything. So I don't need to worry about whether I make the individual vector paths 100% or not. All right, so I'm going to lock that. This is the way I prefer to work in Illustrator. Lock everything you're not working on because that's the easiest mistake to make, to accidentally click on a path you didn't mean to click on. So you use your layers here as a way of organizing what you're doing. They're not necessary because every time you make a new path, it will make a, a new uh, entry that you can select, but it really helps you to lock layers and to be able uh, not to select the wrong thing. So for instance, I've got this black uh, shape of the head. If I want to finish that off, I could use the pen tool to finish it off, but let me remind you of some of the other tools. So I'm going to click that path, and I'm going to use my favorite tool, the pencil tool. And as long as I, just to see the difference, you see how few anchor points the pin tool took to give me that complex shape. Now if I use the pencil tool, I can double click it and I can set it to be more smooth or more accurate. I want it to be pretty smooth, that will lessen the amount of anchor points. And I need to start on the path. And I need to end on the path. I'm just trying to get a silhouette. And at any time, I can just go back to the path, right, and it will redraw. But look how many more anchor points that tool uses. And very often, because I have smooth on so much, it actually didn't get all of the, the exact shapes I drew. So let me try that again with accuracy being in the middle. And this is usually my, my default setting for the pencil tool. So it should be able to get more of these complex curves. We know the pen tool can do it, but we know it's a pain, and it's kind of counterintuitive, whereas this feels a lot more like just drawing it, right? Yeah, so that setting, that matched that curve pretty well, but this one needs a little bit of redrawing. And the pencil tool can do that as long as you start on the path and end on the path. It's like magic scissors. And then I can extend it and keep drawing around. So this is why I like the pen tool, or the pencil tool, rather, more than the, uh, the pen for most things. But the pen is what gives me ultimate control of individual points when I need them. And the pen tool is also your go-to tool if you're looking for perfect shapes, perfect circles, perfect rectangles, perfect angles. This is more of a hand-done kind of logo. So the pen tool isn't as necessary. Okay. So that's just a solid black shape, right? And if I'm cutting it out of paper, which is the analogy I always like, how do I now cut shapes out of this? Well, I could use the eraser, which is a lot like a paintbrush, right? I can set the eraser to be whatever size I want. And I can set it to be pressure sensitive. I can even set its roundness to vary. This is uh, based on better tablets that have tilt and twirl sensitivity. The one I'm really worried about, because our, our $60 bamboo tablets, they're great, but they don't have tilt and twirl. So you don't need to worry about that. You just worry about size, the pressure sensitivity for size. So you find a point size, just like with um, type design, because pixels don't matter. It's points that matter in vectors. 
you make it pressure sensitive and then you get to set how much variation there is. So if I say the size is 37 points, but I want 28 or 27 points of variation, that means the largest I can make my eraser is that big, right? But the variation I have exists in this range. So it can't go too narrow, it can't go too big. And because it's the eraser, you can see how it's cutting out from that black shape. So it is not making white shapes. <laughs> okay, so how might this work? Well, I need to be kind of informed by my sketch, right? You, you have to have a plan. So if I open up my assignment six folder, I'll look at my, my little test. Let's say just this one. And I can open that up in the corner. And this helps me know what to cut out of the black shape. So I want to cut out the eyes. So look, I'm doing it with the eraser and it's a lot like a brush and it's pressure sensitive and it's pretty nice, right? But it's giving me a ton of anchor points, just like live tracing does. So I might need to go in and clean that up. So what if I wanted something more precise, especially for the eyes? Whoops, <laughs> careful of hitting delete, all right. So Command-Z, you can go back as many steps as you want. So what if I use the pen tool? Because I want precision just for the eyes. And I'm going to start right there. And I'm going to go with the straight line right there. Then I'm going to go with a curved line over to here. All right? And I can open up that curve more later. Then I'm going to continue that curve over to here. As few anchor points as possible. And then I'm going to close it. Right? Then I can hold down Command. And I can play with the curves. Oops. Hold down Command, select the individual individual anchor point to move it. Play with the curve. Ah. And you know what I need? I need another anchor point, right? Because those curves. I can't get it to be as complex as I want. So I underestimated, which I often do with the pin tool, how many anchors I will need. But by moving that anchor point, then I have a lot more control. By adding this anchor point, I have a lot more control. And then I can kind of tighten up the eye to a shape I really like. All right, then I can click off of it to deselect. So right now that is an empty path. Actually, no, it's not. It's a solid black path, right, on top of another black path. <laughs> so it looks empty. I am going to change it to a white path just by double-clicking on that fill, or you can also do it up here sometimes. Let's say show color swatches. Not showing me much. All right, and that's because I'm in the uh, the live trace mode. I'll show you how to get out of that before we color. But we do it here. We just make it white. So now that is a white shape, right? But that's helpful because I can see it then clearly on the black. And now because it's digital, I can just Command C, Command V to get a duplicate of it. Use the large selection tool, move it into place for this eye. And these are kind of compositing skills, right? And now I have much more precise eyes with as few anchor points as possible, which have a slightly different edge to them, right, than that really loose outline. Now the question is, how do I cut those out of the black shape? So if I turn off my sketch, this is what it looks like. But if I select it all and move it off onto the gray, you see that that white is still there. And I don't want the white to be there. I need it to be just a black cutout shape. So that if I put it on a business card that's gray, the gray comes through the eyes, right? So this is where Pathfinder comes in. And so it's always one I have open or available. And with Pathfinder, you just select all the overlapping paths. So I'm going to select 
the one white eye, the other